Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week two of The Secret Place. I am your boy Samuel McMillan here. Appreciate you uh, for tuning in and watching, listening wherever this video finds you. Um, I pray that uh, God is changing your heart uh, during this series. Week one was a blast. If you haven't gone and watched it, uh, I encourage you, I challenge you, I implore you to go watch week one. Week one was uh, insane. God moved, He spoke. Um, and I, and I pray that he does that for the rest of this series here as we are now going into week two of the secret place. Um, if you have your Bible with you, go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter seven. If you don't have it with you, grab it. And as you're grabbing it and as you're turning, go ahead and tell yourself this word is for you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you're sitting with somebody, tell them this word is for you. We destroy arguments and every pretension. That sets itself up against the knowledge of Jesus. Yeah, go ahead and tell them this word is for you. You can hear from Jesus. Jesus will speak to you. God will speak to you through his word. Um, and he will change your heart for him. This is exactly for you. You are right on time to start developing your secret place. And if you already have a secret place to keep going in your secret place, to not stop, to actively seek, go in with right intention and to honor and respect and revere the secret place for God is holy and we are to live like he is. <laughs> <laughs> if he is holy, he is calling us to live holy. And that is lost today, especially in Western Christianity. God have mercy. Please don't throw a stone at me. Uh, we, are in, we are in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 7. Um, and the question that I want to ask this week is, are you actively uh, seeking in the secret place? <laughs> A lot of us go in with a laundry list and then we exit the secret place and we leave, but we're not going in actively seeking his heart for what he has to say for us. We just go in, present a, present a laundry list, and then we leave <laughs> with no intention behind getting to know Jesus, getting to know who he is. We treat him as a genie instead of treating him as God. And so he's wanting us to go in actively seeking him, actively seeking his heart. Seeking his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Seeking a deep, intimate relationship with him. Not going in, just presenting a laundry list to him. God have mercy in this place. I don't know how long this is going to go. It could go 10 minutes. It could go 45 minutes. But we're going to honor uh, this space and to give him the space he truly deserves. And let him speak and let him move. Um, let's, let's pray before we read. God, help us to uh, continue to develop a secret place. Help us to honor you, to, to revere you, to, to deem you as holy, to reckon that within ourselves, Father. Uh, to not go in the secret place and just give you a laundry list and leave, but Father, to seek your heart for what you have to say. <laughs> Father, we are done with just presenting things to you and not giving you room to speak. <laughs> How disrespectful of it. Or excuse me, how, how disrespectful it is <laughs> for us as sinners to give you a laundry list and you as a holy God not to speak back. Not giving you room to enter our lives. Not giving you room for a deep connection. For a deep relationship. Father, forgive us. For we have treated you like a genie instead of treating you like a holy God. Good God have mercy. It's in your holy name. Somebody say amen before you throw a stone or a tomato at me. We are in, we are in Matthew chapter 7. This is the last chapter of the Sermon on the Mount. He's speaking to a crowd of people here. Uh, and we only got two verses tonight. Um, but these are very powerful verses about intentionality. And I want to define some words here as we read. Uh, let's read. Uh, verse 7. Ask. And it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Verse 8. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks. The door will be opened. I believe that all three of these words are action words. What does that mean? That means when you go into the secret place, you're going in with action. You're going in with purpose. You're not going in just passively giving him a laundry list. You're going in with action behind what you say you want to do in there, which is we want a deep, intimate connection with Jesus. So if we want a deep, 
intimate connection with him, we have to actively seek it. And I believe these two verses are very powerful because there are three key words in these two verses. <laughs> there are three key words in two verses that give us action, that give us intentionality behind the secret place. And I want to, um, I want to define those words for you. The first word is ask. The first word is ask. If you're taking notes, you may want to write this down. Ask uh, from what I've gathered and through what the Holy Spirit has spoke to me. Ask means seeking with your mouth. And what I have in parentheses, in prayer, not just bringing him a laundry list, but hearing his heart for you. You are seeking with your mouth. That means you are actively seeking a deep intimate connection with him. I believe that for a lot of us, especially in Western Christianity, again, as we've already defined in this little uh, definition, people go in with a laundry list, but we do not uh, give him room to speak. And I believe that is disrespectful to a holy God that all we're doing is begging, 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 and we're not giving him room to speak to us at all. And I believe Jesus wants to establish a deep connection, but that is only when we be quiet after we go in and after we pray and all that we give him room to speak. I believe we have to shut up <laughs> sometimes in the secret place and give him room to speak. All we do is go in. And I think the reason why we leave uh, feeling unfulfilled coming out is because all we do is talk the whole time. <laughs> Yes, we seek with our mouth, but at the same time, we have to be quiet and listen. And I believe that's what asking is, is seeking him with your mouth. We pray, we seek, and then we give him room to speak. We give him room to tell us what he has to say to us. So that's the first word, ask. Pray, yes, pray. Go in with what concerns you. Go in with what's heavy on your heart. Then after you're done talking... <laughs> let the Lord of the universe, let the God of heaven and earth have his time to talk. Good God have mercy. The second word here is seek. Seek and you will find. Seeking means seeking him with your heart. I have in parentheses here, aligning God's will with yours. <laughs> I be, oh, good. Okay, this is good. Stay, stay with me here for a second. I believe that we go into the secret place trying to get God to align with our will. And at the end of the day, we are to align with his will. His plans are better than ours. His way is better than ours. His way is higher than ours and his thoughts are higher than ours. So why are we trying to get God to align with our will? When at the end of the day, if we are in service to him... <laughs> If we claim we serve a holy God, then why are we trying to get him to fit into our plan? Here's, a, here's, here's one that's going to rock culture. Why are we trying to get him to fit into our truth? <laughs> if we say we serve a holy God, we bend to the truth. Oh, good God, have mercy. We bend into the way. We bend into the life. <laughs> we don't try to get him to fit our lifestyle, to get him to fit the way we live, because our way is sinful, his way is holy. <laughs> so if we serve a holy God, again, the word says, be holy for I am holy. So if we're serving him, if we claim we follow him, if we claim we're a disciple, why are we trying to get him to fit the way we live? <laughs> So when we go into the secret place, this is why we talked about pride last week. Because we can't go into the secret place with pride because pride and humbleness don't mix. Pride in a just God does not mix. Pride in a holy God does not mix. So when we go in with trying to get him to bend to our way of living, we find ourselves in trouble. We find ourselves leaving the secret place unfulfilled because we're praying to God to get him to come to us and to come to our way. <laughs> when we are to be aligning ourselves with him in his way. <laughs> so the second word here is seeking, seeking him with your heart, aligning God's will with yours. Again, that's why we talked about leaving pride at the door. When you shut the door, good God have mercy, you're cutting yourself off from the world. That means you have to leave pride at the door. Your truth has to stay out there. 
And as you begin to establish a deep and intimate connection with Jesus, you'll start to see the truth will take over whatever you have to say. Good God have mercy. The last word here, and then we'll close it out here. Knocking. Knock and the door will be open. I have equals here seeking with action. <laughs> because faith without works is dead. What you do outside of pra your prayer time to get closer to Jesus and what distractions are you removing from your life to keep your deep, intimate connection with him even when you leave the secret place? Mm. Seeking him with action. We have a lot of things in our world today that are distracting us from a deep, intimate connection with Jesus. I don't have to name them on here because we, we all go through it. We all go through it. We all have gone through it and we will continue to go through it. There will be things that either we will see, the devil will put in our path or whatever the case may be that will distract us from a deep, intimate connection with Jesus. That will distract us from spending time in the secret place, from establishing the secret place. And I believe that we have to start seeking him with action. <laughs> The way we go about doing things ultimately impacts our secret place. If we're not aligning with God's will outside of the secret place, when we get in there, <laughs> again, we'll be taking a laundry list. We'll be asking him to move, asking him to do all these things. And yet he may not be in any of that. And he wants to tell you that. But you say amen and you get up and then you wonder why you leave unfulfilled. Because your way has to bow, has to take a knee to his way. And if we say we believe in him, if we put our faith and trust in him, we have to show that with action. Don't misconstrue action for boasting though. <laughs> because we are to boast in him. We are, we are weak. He is strong. We are to boast in our Lord and Savior. But he wants you to seek him with action. What does that mean? Cut things out of your life that take away from the secret place. Things that may seem good, but ultimately God ain't in it. He spoke that to, uh, not, not spoke, but he, he showed that to me. And he's been showing it to me for a while now. There, there are things that I used to do that I had to stop doing. <laughs> If I want to establish a deep connection with him, this stuff is good. This stuff can grow. This stuff can do whatever. But God is not in that. And so I have to cut that out because it's taking time away from me spending time with him. It's cutting into it. And my, my, and sh shout out to my, shout out to my pops and my, and, and my mom, because they, tell me that all the, they, they still to this, to this day, <laughs> tell me that all the time. Do not allow things, people, places, whatever, distract you from spending time with Jesus. And I found that out, especially over the last five, six years of my life. Those things are good. Those things can be good. They may turn into something, but God's not in that. And so you're wasting your time there. And I found as I would dive deeper and deeper into those things, my time with Jesus would go down down, down, and down. And ultimately, I did not have a secret place <laughs> because I'm putting time into other things again, as we talked about last week, that don't matter. And so now you have to backtrack, cut those things out of your life when ultimately if we stuck with to what Jesus is already telling us to do, and we allowed him to speak to us in the secret place and not be so quick and in a hurry to get up. He would tell you. He would give you wisdom. He'll give you knowledge and understanding. But we're so quick in a microwavable society. We're so fast. And we don't want to slow down and listen. We don't want to slow down and gain wisdom. We don't want to slow down and gain knowledge. We don't want to slow down and gain understanding from the one that already knows you. He's telling you to seek him with action. So let's just review. Ask, 
equals seeking with your mouth and prayer, not just by bringing a laundry list, but also hearing what he has to say to you. Seeking, seek with your heart, aligning God's will with yours and knocking, seeking with action. What you do outside of your prayer time to get closer to Jesus matters. And the distractions that may seem good, but he's not in them. <laughs> Cut them out. Remove them. To establish a deep and intimate connection with Jesus. Think about this for a second. He, he already knows you. He already knows the hair that's on your head. He, he already knows it all. But yet he wants a deep, intimate connection with you. What a powerful God we serve, but yet he's so personable that he wants to get to know you. And where do we get to know him? In the secret place. Good God have mercy. Ooh, let's pray. Jesus, help us to spend intentional time with you in the secret place. To not just bring a laundry list to you and treat you like a genie, but treat you like a holy God. Father, we pray that we humble ourselves to not just bring a laundry list, but to hear your heart. That we bow our plans to you. We need to get on board with you <laughs> instead of trying to fit you into what we're doing. Oh, good God, have mercy. And help us to seek with action, to cut things out of our life that don't need to be there. To take these things to you in the secret place and allow you to give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding about these things we're dealing with. Every distraction. Lord, we're not going to be perfect. But every day we're making strides to get better toward you in the secret place. And so, Father, we pray that as we continue to seek you with action, align our will with yours and hear what you have to say. We pray that we continue to establish our secret place with intentionality, with purpose behind everything we say that we believe in. Help us that our faith and our actions match. And we continue to pursue you with everything that we have. Help us to start spending intentional time in the secret place. It's in the holy name of Jesus we pray. Somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for watching week two of The Secret Place. We are back next week with week three of The Secret Place. Uh, we're kind of diving into characteristics of The Secret Place now. So for the next two weeks, we'll dive into some characteristics. This week was intentionality. Next week will be something different. Then the fourth week will be something different. Uh, and then we will go from there. We're going to let the spirit move, man, as he, as he is moving. So appreciate you watching uh, and tuning in to week two of The Secret Place. Thank you so much. I pray you have clear vision. We'll see you next week. Peace.